Talking to my uncle Normie, I wanted to find a piece of myself that had been lost. A piece of the country in which had become redundant given my place within the city. I frequently met with my uncle when I've had the time, but I've never truly learnt what made him tick. Okay, when I was young, yeah, when I was young, I had a great lifetime. Um, lived in the country, moved about a fair bit. Um, was, uh, yeah, share farm to share farm, that's, that's why we kind of uh, moved around a fair bit. And um, so I had done lots of things when I was young, you know, I used to have to ride a horse to school. Um, then I ended up down by a riverbank for oh, seven years or something down there. And we used to do a lot of fishing and catching prawns, yeah, motorbikes and Oh, yeah, I used to, that's where I learned to drive a car, old Volkswagen, yeah. That was the, the first car I used to drive around in, on the farm, that is, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I certainly wasn't the right age, but uh, yeah, it was, uh, yeah, great. Yeah, so we got, yeah, we just grew up as, grew up as little country boys and, uh, yeah. So, I tried to bring my kids up the same way in these days, so, yeah. Um, yeah, that's... I left school when I was 17, and I was virtually, oh, I went for, it, it, Dad went into a shop for a little bit just before I left school, so that was about 15, for a couple of years we were in a little shop in town, that was my only towny life I had, and uh, yep, that was enough. Um, so and then 17 and a half I left school and I worked in a, uh, and uh, I went up Wangaratta with my grandparents and actually worked in Brucks. as a, um, doing uh, a loom on a loom up there but, um, but then I, I was training with the Wangaratta Rovers and then I come back down to to uh, home and uh, they wouldn't let me go back they wanted me to play footy so I ended up playing footy and they give me a job in the CRB them days and uh, it was twice as much money as I was getting and um, yeah so from there it's um, uh, met Geordie that's me wife and uh, had a had a kid only 20 and um, her name was Paula and then yeah we'd done a bit of traveling and uh, looking about the place and we come back here and I milked cows for a few years back here with my father because I bought the place next door uh, and then he played around with women too much so we took off and sold the farm next door and I went out to Wongabell which is like next town, I suppose, yeah. I lived out in the bush for five years, and dozing, driving, and um, yeah, built a, built a shop out there in Genoa. Um, then, uh, what did I do then? Yeah, then I, uh, then Dad died. Yeah, he died, and Dad had a heart attack, so Mum said, no, you gotta come back and run the farm, so I've been here ever since then, so. It's uh, yeah, 28 years I've been here now, and a lot, a lot of things happened since then. I had another four kids, and they're all grown up and left, and yeah. But um, no, I've kind of been back here for the last 28 years. Do I enjoy the farm? Oh, very much so. It's like this is not work, as far as I'm concerned. It's not work at all. It's like um, it's. Yeah, getting up in the morning early because I'm an early riser in eight, mozzie. It's just part and parcel of the job. And I wake early, you know, never, haven't set an alarm clock for about 20 years. Um, so it's, uh, yeah, it's fun. It's fun. I really enjoy it. And it's something I know because I've been at it for so long. And uh, yeah, I mean, but you never stop learning. And it's like every day, it's every day you learn something different. And, uh, whether it's about bugs or poisons or, or fertilizers or, or or the weather, you know, it's always there's always something there. It's always something there that keeps you keeps you going. Yeah, it's been really good so that I know it's I virtually know where every stick is on the place. So it's um, just one of those things that you um, yeah, because you every every little piece of the place is like. It becomes like your backyard, but it's a big backyard. That's all there is to it. It's not a, it's not a very small backyard. The, like the blokes in the outback got huge backyards, but compared to mine. But this is a, um, 
This is a small backyard which, which carries a hell of a lot more animals than what they do out the back. And um, yeah, it's, uh, so you've got to know every little blade of grass on it. And, and, um, do I have any regrets about being a farmer? None whatsoever. You can't change the past anyway. It's just one of those things that um, what's done is done. And yeah, so and we are where we are. That's where you end up. And, um, can I change the future? I'm hoping I can. I'm hoping I can make the place beautiful. And um, yeah, so. And that's about all I got to say about that. <laughs> it's, it's, that's a Forrest Gump one, that one. In the end, I feel like I relate to my uncle in more ways than I initially thought. My own perception on the difference between the country and the city has in many ways been removed. In the end, I feel as if this conversation was worthwhile and provided me an insight on what it truly means to be country.